communist Jews in America who have started to divest movement, trying to boycott Israeli goods, to damage the Jews, damage the Jewish people, damage Israel, destroy it. They are a greater threat than Iran, and I don't think the people understand how grave the threat really is. They may even be your neighbor. 855-400-7282. Maybe I should take a caller or two. It's almost an hour and 40 minutes into the show. And I guess I can take calls. I don't know where to begin. I mean, I really don't know where to begin. I'll start here in my hometown of San Fran Stinko. KSFO. Michael from San Fran Stinko. What's on your mind, Michael? Oh, Dr. Savage, what an honor. I just wanted to say, I just heard that you play from the, Mr. Trump about saying that the Jews would not survive the next 25 years. I really don't believe that's going to happen because, as you say, the Jews have been spared and saved time over and over, miraculously at some times. I have a dear friend. He's a Jew. His brother passed away. Uh, he was one of the jumpers in the uh, World Trade Center. And this guy uh, was a hardcore Democrat. And he told me that that event uh, shaped his life. He went back into his Jew uh, tradition. He practices uh, the, the, the Orthodox tradition. Uh, and he knows I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a, I'm a LDS uh, Christian, and we get along fine. Um, I, I don't go against him. Yes, the greatest friends the Jews have on the planet are fundamentalist Christians. And the worst enemies the Jews have on the planet are the communist left-wing Jews in the United States of America and Europe who hate Israel. Hate Israel in a way you can never imagine. They're a graver threat to Israel than Iran is. Do you understand? You do understand what I'm saying. Absolutely, Dr. Savage. You do understand that it's, that it's the Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg uh, uh, characters in Hollywood who are a graver threat to Israel than Iran is. Why do you think I ridicule these powerful men of Jewish descent in Hollywood? Because they make me sick. They produce pollution and violence, and then they go out and preach against guns. Here's Harvey Weinstein. This, this guy drives me crazy altogether. Here is a guy who's made his fortune by producing violent films. And then the first thing he says a few months ago is, I'm going to make a movie against the NRA. I will destroy them. I'll show them who I am. This is an amazing thing to witness. It's an amazing thing to witness. This moron, billionaire who produced so much violence and filth, doesn't even know the history of his own people, if he can say a thing like that. Because if Weinstein gave me five minutes in a restaurant, I could teach him a little history. I may actually bring him back to reality and save him. I would teach him what happened in the Holocaust and how the few Jews who escaped into the mountains and the, and the woods in Poland, for example, and ran into the woods. One of the first things they had to do after getting food was get a gun. They had to break into farmhouses to get a gun in order to survive in those woods, Harvey. Without a gun, there would be no Jewish survivors in World War II. Does he know that? Does he know they had to take guns from Polish farmers? They had to steal them? Does he know they had to kill Germans with their bare hands or rocks to get their guns? And that without those guns, they would not have survived those brutal winters? He doesn't know that, does he? Because he lives in Beverly Hills where all is sky blue and, and white clouds. I was just there. It's very easy to forget what the real world is. To forget what's changing in the world around you. Very easy to do. And that's why I have such contempt for the Hollywood crowd, the Hollywood mob, the Hollywood porno makers, the softcore porno, the violence, or guys like Sean Penn who espouse anti-gun rhetoric while every movie is beating someone up or killing them or cutting them apart with an axe. I don't understand how people don't see this. The word hypocrisy doesn't even work for these guys. It's something else. It's called insanity. It's called insanity. Liberalism is a mental disorder. It is a drug unto itself that's poisonous. Now let's go to the callers. I don't know where to begin. I don't know if I even want callers. I think I'd rather do more history. I'm in, I'm in one of my weird moods. Remember yesterday I did something else? I did yesterday something so different. I talked about poetry. <laughs> I read A.E. Hausman. And I talked about how he was hated even as a poet because of his appalling sarcasms and his unmitigated scorn for bad poets. And I said that I have appalling sarcasm and unmitigated scorn for politicians and public figures in America. Remember that? Remember I also told you that I, Michael Savage, am known as pugnacious and opinionated? 
Yes, but that's one side of the moon. But I also told you that were it not for my elegance and intellectual fastidiousness, I wouldn't be where I am today. There's a lot of pugnacious and opinionated people, but they don't get too far in terms of being read, as I have with one bestseller after another, being listened to on a daily basis by a large audience, because anyone can be pugnacious and opinionated, and that could pass for something or other. You could even be a basketball dribbler. You could be pugnacious and opinionated, have tattoos and say things. But under the surface, there's nothing there. There's no elegance. There's no intellectual fastidiousness. There's nothing. It's just a dribbler with a basketball. Now they're in, in, in the political world now. See, it's a little different. To sh to, see, they, they confuse me. People listening to this show confuse me. They think, oh, just be uh, brusque. Sound like a longshoreman from New York in the 50s and you'll get ahead. Those shows don't last. Because they don't understand the, the subtext of it all. They don't hear it. They only hear the surface. So now I want to go back to the big issue of the day because we're coming upon Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, the first night of uh, the Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which means the head of the year. Jews around the world will celebrate the advent, the end of one year, 5775, beginning of 5776, and ask themselves a question, which is how much longer can Israel go on and how much longer can Israel survive and will it? with a King Haman in the White House, who is going against the will of the people, the will of Congress itself, through uh, legal man uh, manipulations in Congress. That's what he's doing. This is not a man who believes in the system that he has, that has given so, him so much. The more I study this man in the White House, the more I realize he has no respect for our, way, our, our system of laws. He, he looks upon this as something to get around. And that is because he's fundamentally in his heart, not an American. I know that's a harsh observation, but it's my own. Others may have said it. He doesn't think like an American. He doesn't act like an American. He acts like a man who comes from another time and another place, almost pharaonic in his nature, thinking that he's the, a pharaoh of ancient Egypt and that he has the divine right to make decisions no matter what meddlesome Congress may say. Forget the people. They don't count at all. They're nothing but cannon fodder for him. Get it? I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. We got breaking news on the Savage Nation just passed the communist one-party state of California has just approved right-to-die legislation. The communist one-party state under Governor Brown, the Fuhrer of California, just approved a measure that would allow California doctors to prescribe life-ending drugs to terminally ill patients. Now, as you well know, this is the mark of an atheist. This is the mark of a state that hates life. You do know that religious people oppose suicide. This is a suicide mission. It's assisted suicide is what it is. Dr. Kevorkian in the state legislature just passed this because they don't believe in the sanctity of life. They sell baby body parts. And now they're telling you, you know, if you don't feel good, we'll help you kill yourself. That's all. You know, you know you're nothing. You're nothing but a pile of bones and a, a, foul, a foul sack. You have no soul, no spirit. This is what California has become. The late great state of California under this demonic one party system did exactly what Oregon has done. And by the way, how has this worked out for those in Holland? You want you like to know a little bit about the right to die legislation in Holland, that advanced state, that dying advanced state of Europe, the once great state of Ho nation of Holland? Twelve year olds in Holland, maybe it's fourteen year olds, are now committing suicide with doctors' drugs because they don't feel good. They don't like the way they feel. These are the nations that are dying while the Muslims are taking them over. It's all God's will. I'm convinced of it. I mean, right now it doesn't look like that, but I'm pretty sure that God is behind it all. When he sees a nation committing suicide, he doesn't care who takes it over as long as they believe in God. He figures, let them work it out. If the people don't want to live, you know what? I'll help them along. Same in California. A state committing suicide every day with illegal aliens, sister suicide, Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. The Holocaust, once again facing the hatred of the world, most of it coming not so much from Iran, but from an American communist Jews who are running to divest, attack Israel, universities, Jewish professors, communists attacking Israel. And now we have a president who is much like ancient King Haman. How in the world Jewish people cannot see history repeating itself is, is not beyond me. I see it all. But you know what? Russia has just eluded a U.S. ban on NATO airspace by flying uh, troops and weapons into Syria via Iraq and Iran. And this is the beginning of a new phase where the rubber meets the rogue. Write it down. It'll be stolen before it leads my... It leaves my as the as the giant transporters arrive from Moscow, and their tires squealed on the tarmac. The thin one in Washington D.C. has just realized he now has a real crisis, one that he can't talk his way out of. It's where the rubber of these Russian air transport tires meet the rogue president of the United States. They're bringing in men, Marines, equipment. They're going to support Assad. The rogue president will not throw Assad out no matter what he thinks he may do. We have now gone from a uh, Cold War started by Obama and the loudmouth Hillary Clinton, who called Putin Hitler a year ago. They re Think about this. Russia was once a great ally of ours. Great ally. We were getting along. It was the best in history. The best. 50 years were thrown in the garbage by this incompetent, lying degenerate administration. So now it's gone from a cold war, it's about to become a hot war. Russian AN-124 Condors fly into Syria, going around the loudmouth and catch up Kerry, get into Syria via Iraq and Iran, and there, there we are. What do you think the Russians are going to do? Do you think they're going to let this community organizer overthrow Assad? And what? There's even more to this. Iran is on the side of Assad. Do you know that? Do you know that Iran and Russia are both backing Assad? Do you, do you realize this? The very same deceitful game player in the White House who tells us to do a deal with Iran is now in a war with Iran over Assad. Go figure that one out. See if you can follow the bouncing, the, the bouncing mind of Barack Obama. Follow the bouncing mind of Barack Obama. No wonder he likes basketball so much. It represents his thinking. So now they're in Syria. Huge military buildup. And of course, White House spokesmouth, the Goebbels of uh, Obama, Josh Ernst, our own Goebbel, warned last night the Russian military buildup would risk confrontation with the counter ISIL coalition that included the United States. There is no counter ISIL coalition. The United States is ISIL. Explicit American threats, by the way, have American threats of a military blowout with Russia over the Middle East, we have not heard for 40 years since the 1973 Yom Kippur War, which Israel fought against Egypt and Syria. To show you how damaging and dangerous this psychotic administration is, we have not seen a level of danger like this with Russia since 1973. These incompetent meddlers, these left-wing lunatics, these collaborators with the terrorists of Iran have now reached a point of no return. It's where the rubber meets the rogue. Write it down. It'll be stolen before it leaves my lips. The rubber of the transports from Russia meet the rogue president. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something real clear. Putin doesn't blink. Putin does not blink. He does not back down. He will not give this up. It's Crimea all over again. The world could go to hell, according to him. He feels that Crimea was part of Russia, which it was, by the way, since the 1800s. He took it. Nothing happened. And now he believes that Assad is his ally, and he's not like Obama. He doesn't abandon his allies. See, Obama has no allies. He'll throw anyone overboard. 